but we've got a nice new 2506 that we've been playing with and so far we've just been shooting factory ammunition out of it. We're getting um, a sub 1 MOA group out of the rifle at the moment but I, th I still think that we can improve on that so what we're going to do is we're going to re do some reloading for it. So we've got a brand new RCBS um, reloading kit and we're going to do some unboxing and literally just go through from start to finish um, a very brief overview of reloading and when I started reloading it, it filled me with fear and dread because you just think oh crikey it's going to be you know really complicated you're going to have to do lots of reading lots of research but and I, I think with reloading you can take it as far as you want to take it you can get into it work up a load to a, a stage that you're happy with or you can take it to the nth degree and it really depends what sort of personality you are if I can get something that's clover leafing, you know, I'll be happy. But as I say, we're just going to set it up to show how simple it is to set up and how quickly and easily you can make some rounds. One caveat I will put in is to make sure that you put yourself away, tuck yourself away, because you don't want any outside distractions. So make yourself a cup of tea, take a couple of biscuits, turn your phone off and just concentrate on what you're doing. It's only taken five or ten minutes just to set up the stand um, on the work surface. And um, as I say, it would be a little bit quicker yeah, if it was um, just stored away in a box and it wasn't all new, but we just had to re-familiarise ourselves with um, a couple of the bits in there. And then we shall be ready to kick off. And we go down. So we're just going to get this in line. So we just tighten that collet up. Just put a little bit of lube on there like so. And with the magic of television, that is 20 done in less than a second. So a couple of other pieces of equipment that's not included in the kit that you definitely need powder trickler and a, a very very accurate set of digital calipers. There we go, 2506 Remington. I'm primarily looking for around for Chinese water deer, muntjac, roe and fox. So we can go a little bit lighter on the grain weights. I think we'll try out the 100 grain and the 87s to start off with, with Vitavori and 160, which we've got just here. The max that we want to use is 54, we'll do four sets of five. So we're gonna back off from the maximum. We'll come down, I think the mid range on here is saying 52. So we will go um, 52 and a half grains and work up from there uh, to just under the maximum and see where that takes us. So we've got the um, boat tail soft point 100 grains that we're gonna be using. So touch it in, give it a twist, and then we seat it down and everyone will just check with the calipers. As I say, we want this to be about three to 40. There's our 20 rounds. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go and shoot three shot groups. Um, if we get pretty much where we want with the three shot groups, then it gives us a couple of shots just to see how they're going out at 200 and 300 possibly. So we'll have a play with that um, and see what works. Okay, so we're now out on the range as if by magic. We've got the different types of rounds and we've got a couple of factory that we're gonna put through as well. Now, we're not bothered at all about zero. All we're bothered about on this exercise is just what grouping we're getting from each of the uh, sets of rounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the factory, see what we get from the factory. In between every set of rounds, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the rifle down and let it cool. Now, the Tika T3 um, that we've got here in 2506 is um, a lightweight model, so the barrel is not a heavy weight, it's not a varmint barrel, so we are just, because we want to do three shot rounds, we're just going to let it cool a little bit, clean it in between, and then hopefully that will give us a, a true indication of, of what we're doing. It is a little bit laborious, but to get the exact information that we want from putting the time in to reloading then it's worth spending the extra couple of minutes each time just cleaning the rifle. Okay now let's see if our efforts this morning were worth it or not. I'm going to do three shot groups again. Okay so I'm just checking the cases as we're going up in the loads to make sure we've got no signs of excess pressure on the cases. So everything looks to be absolutely fine there. 
Uh, we'll have a, another quick clean down. We're losing light rapidly now, which is a, a shame. So we might have to put a little bit of light from the truck on the target just to make sure it's a, a fair test. Okay, so let's just have a quick run through. We've got the 52.5s here, so we've got two and one away a little bit. It's that third one that we're losing it at, and when we're going back up to maximum, up to 54, we're, we're coming apart again. So we'll have a, another batch of rounds just with a couple of different alterations on that and just see if we can get the group together and then clover leafing. But yeah, I mean, from, a, from an initial start off, nothing's overly concerning, nothing's overly bad, but nothing's overly brilliant with that. So, um, yeah, I mean, they, they're workable groups and you could pretty much take all of those out and, and safely go and shoot a fox or go and stalk a deer. Um, but from my own personal perspective, I do like to get them a little bit closer than that to start with. We've been away, um, obviously made up some different rounds. We found a powder charge that was yeah, coming together but now what we've done is we've uh, messed around and we've changed the seating depth of the bullets in the cases so we've altered the overall length of the cartridge so we've got a few different batches at different lengths and we're just going to see what works best so we've stayed with the same powder charge and all we've done now is just come in on the seating depth at different levels um, down to about a standard factory level um, and now we're just going to see what results we get. So nothing, again, it, the, the reloading we're doing is, um, is not rocket science, it's all pretty simple stuff. So we're just going to make sure that we're shooting each set through a clean barrel um, and hopefully we shall get better results than we did just with altering the powder charge. Yeah, baby. I think we might have found the solution. Excellent. And bearing in mind, I'm not the most flexible of people, as my other half will contest to. But um, yeah, I mean, we were shooting on the side of a hill there, um, shooting down and contorting myself around the grass on this particular bit of hill. But I'm quite happy with that grouping there. I think we are pretty much ready to take this out and. Uh, start extending the ranges. As I say, we've been out with it already, with the factory loads, we've taken it out and we've stalked with it because the grouping we've got was absolutely acceptable to go stalking with. Um, but with the reloading, I think it's now allowed us to really tighten that group up so we've got the confidence to go out and really start extending the ranges. Almost perfect, almost what I was looking for. So we've got two shots through this hole here and one that's touching up there. So. You can't really get a lot better than that. Um, I mean, that one, just being a little bit higher, could have probably been my error. So, um, but as I say, when you're, when you're shooting in these conditions and shooting on the side of a hill and uh, with everything else, I'll take that one. So, and we'll, uh, we're more than happy with that. I think it is now time to go home, have a well-deserved cup of tea, and then we can come out and play on a better day and see what we can do.